Hello and welcome to the Maple Grove City Report. I'm Dave Kaiser from CCX Media. Thanks for joining us once again along with Heidi Nelson, Maple Grove City Administrator. Welcome once again. Thank you. We have the meeting from February 7th to talk about, about an hour 40 minute meeting with a number of big topics. We'll get to that in a second. Also, things coming up in the city. There's a lot for your calendar, so get mm -hmm. it ready for us. From the meeting on the 7th, one item pulled from consent and this has to do with a zoning ordinance related to garbage. Recycling all those good cans out. Give us a little background and tell us what was decided. Yeah, so Councilmember Jagger pulled this one for some discussion. So we had had um, some work session discussion with the council earlier um, before year end and talked about kind of the code enforcement challenges we were having with enforcement of uh, the, the um, garbage and refuse or refuse and recycling containers. So our, pr our old code or the existing code had required that they be um, you know, screened or in the garage, they basically had to be completely out of sight. And right. so we often would get, you know, lists of hundreds of addresses <laughs> of folks that had garbage can violations and um, was becoming quite onerous for, for staff and, and sure. really a decision about do we add staffing, you know, to follow up on this issue. So we had kind of a policy level discussion with the council to decide, you know, is there maybe some tweaking we could do to this ordinance to give folks some flexibility mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. We do know, you know, things have been added. So we have refuse, we have recycling, people sometimes have yard waste or n and now organics right. and so it can really right. add up the number of containers that you have. So this gives some flexibility for two containers to be stored. It has to be on the side um, behind the front plane of the house. Mm -hmm. um, it can't be out in front of the garage, can't be out at the end of the driveway, it needs to be on an approved surface so it can't be just out in the lawn, that kind of a thing. So okay. there are some rules in place still but it does give a little bit of flexibility and hope fully um, kind of eases up on some of the code enforcement right. so we can pay attention to a lot of other issues as Very well. Very good. I'm sure information on the city's website maplegrovemn.gov if you want to find out more. Next in the meeting, a update from a state representative. Tell us about Representative Robbins' words. Yeah, so Representative Robbins in was to give us an update here. Session just kicked off again at the right. end of January, so kind of early in the session. But I think one of the early issues they're they're dealing with is kind of the unemployment insurance obligation um, of businesses. And even at local government level, mm -hmm. we have an outstanding bill for unemployment insurance during the pandemic. And I think there's a, a move at the state to use some of the, um, the surplus this year to shore up that account here okay. at the state level um, and not pass those costs along to businesses and so um, I think the legislature is trying to deal with that uh, early on seems to be bipartisan support for a solution there so lots of other things uh, going on this session we of course have our our bonding request for the community center project and mm -hmm. so we'll continue to work with um, representative Robbins on that and uh, we're really hoping to uh, with the new federal money that's come as well as the state surplus money uh, work through the transportation committee to secure a bit more funding um, to get the 610 project over the finish line. We're Very in nice. need of about another $22 million mm -hmm. of the uh, total $53 million project and so um, we're hoping to take a run at that. So we'll stay in touch with Representative Robbins throughout the session. All right, more to come here as the session moves along. All right, get ready for this. Community and economic development items. There was a <laughs> boatload here and yeah. lots of big projects. Let's begin with the AMC Theater site. Yes. What has happened there? What are the thoughts moving forward? forward. Yeah, so folks are likely aware that the theater closed um, earlier this year. Uh, there was some, you know, social media, news media information out about that, but I, I do think, you know, the theater industry is struggling on mm -hmm. the whole, whether it's the pandemic or folks being able to stream most anything they want from their homes. I think theaters are, are struggling in general, but this one um, was an interesting one. This was kind of a franchise site. It was owned by an investment group out of Ohio, and so it was a franchise AMC site, and we'd, we'd had some concerns out there with that site and its mm -hmm. upkeep and not a lot of investment had been made over the years and um, you know working with them on code enforcement issues on their site in terms of the condition of the parking lot garbage landscaping those kinds of things so right. I don't think it was a real high priority um, for the the ownership or the MC industry um, this site so um, the, the site has been acquired by a new group um, called launch properties um, they have a redevelopment plan for the site uh, unfortunately the theater goes away um, we were uh, you know saddened by 
by that. Mm -hmm. I think everybody likes to hang on to those type of entertainment right. um, places, but I think uh, the, it'll be a while till the theater industry, you know, is back in the expansion mode. So the theater will be transitioning to a um, floor and decor store. Uh, it needed a an amendment to the PUD agreement because this was approved as right. a theater, so that that needed to happen. So this was a um, a development stage consideration for the theater building in and of itself. So we looked at some new elevations. Of course, a lot of changes will happen on the interior of that building, mm -hmm. as well as you know the facade and, and the trade dress for the floor and decor store. Uh, what's coming along with it for the rest of the site is would be three additional buildings um, around you know in the parking lot area there. Of course, with the floor and decor store, the parking demand goes dramatically down right. from a theater, so it really opens up some of that real estate for other uses. Um, likely some restaurants, restaurant and service uh, sure. coming in <laughs> those course. buildings. <laughs> one standalone restaurant and then two kind of multi-tenant buildings. Mm -hmm. um, those were just the concept stage review, so really okay. looking at those uses, the building locations. Um, there's more to do here on traffic and yeah. circulation in the parking lot. Right. As everyone knows, that intersection out by Nordstrom Rack, if you're turning you know, to come into the shops area, is a tough one. Um, so we've been looking at some potential improvements there mm -hmm. um, because we know, you know with the three additional buildings, while the floor and decor store will reduce traffic, you know, we're going to have uh, three new buildings that will increase that. And it's already a busy area. So mm -hmm. we're going to be looking at that. I think we're going to take another run at maybe a right in off of Elm Creek Boulevard into kind of that... Um, that north end of the the site out there, so you'd come kind sure. of straight in towards Total Wine. Mm -hmm. um, that Lifeway Christian Bookstore is transitioning to a Sierra Trading Company, and right. those are quite popular. Um, so likely uh, more consideration of some traffic improvements that would get done okay. at the time um, that the development stage plan comes Very forward exciting. for the balance of the site. So mm -hmm. that's a big one. All right. And then we have the Arbor Lakes Business Park, so just a little due east there on the other side yep. of the fountains. Um, this would be the land that would be south of the existing business park development that's going on all the way up to the interstate. So mm -hmm. this uh, plan is for concept stage. It would be five um, new kind of office flex buildings uh, that would be located around um, that site there with some storm pond improvements, um, some road connections, trails, those kinds of things. Um, Developer on this one is uh, Josh Budish with Endeavor. He, of course, was part of um, the phase one with Duke and then mm -hmm. did the is in doing the second phase now um, there up against Elm Creek Boulevard. Uh, so nice uh, architecture proposed on this one. I think they want to remain flexible in that, you know, if there's some build to suit here for an, a company that wants to locate and have a more specific design. So if you think about some of the things that live up off the 610 corridor, right. that kind of a thing, and those mm -hmm. that, you know, face right up on um, 694. So this one's just just a concept stage. Uh, we'll likely see this one come back with more detail uh, later as we get into the spring months. All right, some exciting action happening in that area. Next is the North Grove Medical Center planned unit development, and this is up in the Maple Grove Parkway area. Yeah, so 105th, um, off 105th, just uh, east of Maple Grove Parkway, north of 610, so kind of up by the, the Davis Medical Building that's yep. under construction right now for Minji. Um, this would be a multi tenant medical office building um, that is built being built kind of on spec right now but very nice architecture and I think it continues to grow the medical office presence up in that area in and around the hospital. All right, then as more businesses come, we need more places for people to live. And so this next project might be one Summerwell Maple Grove Plan Unit Development. These are townhomes, but a special type of townhome. Yeah, so this is about 220 units and these are rental townhomes mm -hmm. um, uh, just north of 105th Avenue east of um, Maple Grove Parkway, north of 610 up there, so a lot of activity happening yes. up in that 105th, 610 area. Um, this is the development stage plan, so we had seen this in concept um, before the end of the year. Right. But, uh, you know, very, uh, kind of a nicer, you know, higher end rental develop, um, townhome community, high level of amenity, there'll be a clubhouse and a pool and all those kinds of things. Um, so this one did gain um, development stage uh, plan approval, and so we'll likely see some activity on that site over the summer months. All right. If that's not enough action happening in that area, how about this for more? Planning Commission coming up February 14th, and yep. they have a full list on their agenda. Yeah, so they get to celebrate Val Valentine's Day yes, at the Planning Commission. <laughs> right. Uh, so we have Fox Briar Ridge East, and this is a 17 uh, twin home and one single family home development. It's just out 
um, just kind of next to um, Heritage Christian Academy out mm -hmm. on the, the west side. This one's being brought forward by Donna Homes. And then um, we have 82 townhome development off of 105th, north of 105th, kind of up by the Northwood Church development. So this is the second phase right. of that townhome development up there. And then we have the Edison Apartments. That one is um, just north of the Menard site, kind of up in that TRICARE area. Um, this one's coming through for concept as well. Another date for your calendar here, May 7th, thinking out until mm. spring, Arbor Committee is busy with Arbor Day. What will happen then? Yeah, it's been on a bit of a hiatus with yes. COVID, but they're coming back for May 7th Good. for their kind of traditional Arbor Day celebration at the community center. As we record this on February 9th, we have activity going on today. What is going on today? A couple different things happening. Yeah, so we have a community meeting tonight for the Territorial Road Small Area Plan. So kind of that area between Fernbrook um, and um, kind of the edge of the city out uh, towards uh, Territorial 81 out there, okay. um, north of um, County Road 81, and really a lot of development pressure happening up sure. in that area and some of that land being under contract by developers. So we really needed to kind of take a step back and look at that whole area, the extension of Maple Grove Parkway. Maple Grove Parkway will eventually extend to the north and connect up with Fernbrook, mm -hmm. um, kind of north of that roundabout that's been constructed there. And then um, we have plans for some park improvements in that area, likely all single fan or um uh, residential type development that okay. would occur up in there. We have some historic sites up in there. That's kind of where the first schoolhouse was located sure. in Maple right. Grove Town right. Hall. And then um, there's a historical cemetery up there as well. So as we think about some of those park improvements or public amenities, we're really um, kind of trying to tie in some of the history there with Territorial Road being kind of one of the first roads in right. the state yeah. of Minnesota. The Ox Cart Trail, as if I recall. It is. <laughs> right. It was at St. Paul to Little Falls, I think. And so um, a lot of history there. Yeah. And so we want to preserve that and kind of acknowledge that in that park development up there. So kind of a neat area that we're looking at. Uh, this is, is kind of an open house meeting and then mm -hmm. uh, we do plan to have probably some work session time later in March to bring this forward for some broader discussion with council and involved boards. All right, the other event today, if you've noticed that construction out in front of Cub Foods, mm. it's now opening up. Yeah, we, so we have the new Cub Foods uh, liquor store out in front of Cub in the in the parking lot there. This is Cub Foods' um, first standalone liquor store. Okay. Typically, they're kind of a side car to the right. to the grocery store, and very nice looking store. It's uh, I think it's a little bit bigger than we all thought it was going to be on the site, but I think it looks really uh, kind of nice and attractive out there. And so they'll be celebrating their grand opening this afternoon. Another event coming up very quickly as we record. This is on February 11th, Housing for All Legislative Meeting. Yeah. What is this group once again? We've talked about them many times in the past. Yeah, so this is a group. Usually they hold a legislative breakfast. Um, this one's going to be just online this year, mm -hmm. so Friday morning, February 11th. And it's a group that um, works on uh, affordable housing issues kind of uh, up in the Northwest Metro here. So a number of different uh, entities from the faith community, um, different organizations that serve people in need, uh, involved with uh, housing for all and so of course we are generally involved at the city level as well um, we have a number of projects you know that we are going on um, to help solve the kind of the affordable workforce housing piece mm -hmm. um, not only just for workforce but also for seniors and so um, we'll have staff present there um, to provide Very an good. update about those efforts here in Maple Grove and last note in development the new business is open in the shops area this is Planet Fitness yes. where are they open yeah so Planet Fitness is um, open kind of at the the far um, east end of the mall. They're in the former Forever 21 space. Right. Our Maple Grove Parks and Recreation right. were in there for a bit last winter mm -hmm. doing some programming in that space. Mm -hmm. But now it's transitioned to Planet Fitness and they'll be celebrating their grand opening on February 19th. They are open now, but that'll be kind of their formal event. Very good. All right. Again, the meeting of the 7th, a long meeting. A couple final notes here. One was from engineering talking about suburban rate authority. Again, Break this down for us. What does it mean and what's the issue they're talking about right now? Yeah, so we um, have a role as part of the Suburban Rate Authority in reviewing um, the center point uh, in, you know, when utilities come forward with an increase in mm -hmm. rates. Um, so center point has increased made a request to increase their rates, um, increase their revenue by 67 million. Um, typically these type of rate increases are reviewed for quite a bit of, uh, quite a long period of time. Right. Um, so there has been a temporary increase approved um, of 42 million in revenue and all of that uh, means 3.9% increase rates on residential and then 5.1% on commercial industrial. So folks will start to see that on their Senate point bill and then um, okay. you know that process continues as they look at that full uh, revenue increase that they're requesting. 
Final note from administration, community center working group. There's some appointments going on and this is a great list of people. Yes. Who is involved and what is the purpose of this group? Yeah, so we um, wanted to pull together a group of stakeholders and interested uh, organizations uh, that can really help over the next year kind of help refine the space planning and programming for um, the eventual community center project um, as well as help with you know we have our, our communications and education plan that we're uh, working on right now for you know the local option sales tax as well mm -hmm. as just getting information out about the project so kind of a two-fold purpose and right. helping us further refine um, space planning and programming as well as help with those communications efforts so we did some outreach to the various groups um, that will be either you know have space in the facility, our users of the facility, and so the group will be made up of representatives from the Osseo Maple Grove Youth Hockey Association, the Senior Center, and our age-friendly Maple Grove. Right. Um, we will have some uh, representatives from the Teen Center, members from the former Citizens Advisory Committee, members of the Maple Grove community, so we just broad uh, community representation, mm -hmm. um, active community center users, the Maple Grove Tourism Board, so experienced Maple Great. Grove, we're going to hear more about that later mm -hmm. in March, mm -hmm. and then uh, the Maple Grove Historical Preservation Society, the Maple Grove Arts Center and the Arts Community, and then representatives from the City Council and Park Board. So kind of a sure. robust group. Sounds we have great. about 22 members, yes. um, but we did want to make sure we had a broad, you know, cross-section of folks that will have space in the community center or have, um, you know, interest in using in our you know, use the space, yeah. our community center users, that mm -hmm. kind of a thing. So hopefully uh, looking to get a first meeting uh, for this group scheduled in March. Okay. And then they would serve, you know, through the upcoming year. And then as we transition, once we know kind of where we're headed with a project after the election in November, um, get going on design and, and, and likely this group would continue on and have a role in that as well. So All right. this group will get underway next month. Great. Thanks to everyone who stepped forward and is involved. Final note is coming up this Saturday the 12th as we tape this. You and the council are going to be busy. We are. So every two years, we uh, take a Saturday in the winter time. Uh, luckily, it's going to be about eight degrees on Saturday, right. so you wouldn't want to be doing anything else anyways. Exactly. Um, and we sit with the council and our director's team and kind of talk about where we are and what the challenges and opportunities we see coming in the next three to five years and try to set some work priorities around that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just a good opportunity to take a time out outside of the regular cadence of our business and, right. and really have an opportunity to share information and for the council to um, you know really kind of spend that time with directors understanding um, what those challenges and opportunities are and from that we establish a new set of goals that uh, then will be for the 2022 to 2024 mm -hmm. time frame and um, we develop a work plan behind that and and those are things you know we try to pick you know three to five things because of course this is in addition to everything else you know the services and and work that we do here at the right. city but I think it it helps um, kind of give some direction to staff and put a fine point on mm -hmm. what really needs to you know be prioritized in our work at the city so we're all looking forward to Saturday February 12th and we'll be down in the emergency operations center at the at the government center all right and next time we're together we'll talk about that along mm -hmm. with the next council meeting which that next council meeting date is changed today because of the upcoming holiday tell yes, us about so, that yes city offices will be closed on Monday February 21st in observance of the President's Day holiday and then of course our meeting uh, flips to the Tuesday the 22nd second. All right. That's it for the meeting. Now let's go to some other things happening around the city and here's something you should see in the mail and want to get a hold of. It's the Residence Guide. Yes. What's inside? Yeah, so the annual Maple Grove Osseo Residence Guide um, should be in your mailbox to all households and businesses. Um, lots of information in there as well as a variety of uh, you know information about the various events that go on throughout the year and a restaurant map so that's always important and they're also available at the Government Center and the Community Center to pick one up. We have been talking behind the scenes about some ways to get the state of the city information out and it looks like the plan is coming together. What's the latest on that plan? Yeah, so we talked about, you know, the, the mayor and council were able to attend the I-94 um, Chamber of Commerce uh, State of the City event, mm -hmm. which I think will now become kind of our, our in-person ga in gathering okay. event that we will participate in for State of the City. Uh, but we do want to continue to provide kind of a Maple Grove specific uh, report out to the community and we're, we're going to continue to do that in a video format. 
format. Very so uh, the mayor will come in and I think sit down and visit with you about Perfect. what's happening mm -hmm. with the city. And this year we're going to also focus on um, the new our new destination management organization, Experience Maple Grove. Uh, we'll have the interim executive director in to visit with the mayor, and I think Good. Brett Angel, our economic development manager, will also be a part of that. So it'll provide kind of a nice recap of of what's happened in the past year in the city, what we're looking forward to, and then uh, what we're looking forward to with Experience Maple Grove as well. Very good, so we'll be looking for that in the coming month. Community Center Gym. People are interested in that facility, but still some processes they have to go through to get there. Yeah, so we're still um, doing reservations uh, for the gym, uh, and we do have some capacity limits there as well. Mm -hmm. Lots of information available on our website about that, and you do have to make those reservations online. All right, it is winter time. We're getting out of it here, but <laughs> wonders of winter just occurred. How was that event? What did people think? Yeah, so last Saturday was a busy day in Maple Grove. We had the polar plunge right. out at Fish Lake Park, That's and right. that was um, really a great event. Our Chief Werner uh, jumped in the lake that day along with <laughs> um, a lot of uh, various officers from the police department and members of the Rotary Club as well, so that was a mm -hmm. fun day. And then we had our Wonders of Winter event over at Central Park. Uh, and a great new thing this year that they added um, is a kind of a it's a combination between a game called Crokey Knoll and curling uh, this game uh, hails from Canada and our own Tanya Huntley and our Parks and Recreation Department um, she's from Canada and she brought this idea and thought it would be a nice addition to Central Park there Great. in the winter time uh, we even had Fox 9 out um, and do nice. a story the other morning uh, where they showed you know how to play um, Crokey Curl and so the the course is set up out there and all the tools that you need uh, okay. to play the game are there as well as the rules and that and how to play so we encourage folks to get out and check out the croquet knoll especially now that the olympics are on yes, i think it raises right. <laughs> people's interest yes. in curling and all those types of activities and and of course the skate loop remains open out there but um you know just a great job by our parks and recreation department on yeah. that wonders of winter event they had the kites out there all kinds of fun things it was a little bit of a cooler day right but i think uh, lots of fun had by all all right, speaking of cooler days, the fire department always prepares for those cold days. What yes. type of training do they do during the winter? Yeah, so they do the cold water and ice rescue training, and they uh, go down to Lake Minnetonka, the Tonka Bay Marina. Um, they do provide aeration around many of their dock systems down on Lake Minnetonka, so there's still open water and okay. then ice that right. they can do training in. But certainly um, a cold time of the year. Uh, they have all the gear, you know, to get in the water right. and, and stay protected and do that, but it's good to do that training so you're ready when something happens. All right, let's warm up with this thought, and it seems odd timing, but it's the beginning of the year, so yes. time to get ready for recreational burn permits. Yes. What do I need to do as a resident? Yeah, so every year we ask that folks go online and get a new recreational burn permit. They are free of charge. It's really just kind of a, a place for folks to um, submit some information, and then okay. um, we really use this as an opportunity to educate folks about what the rules are about recreational fires so that um, they, they stay safe and, and recreational indeed so all that information is available on the fire department website page all right and a last note to pass along if you are into art here's an opportunity for you at the art center mm -hmm. they've got a show coming up yeah, so the Maple Grove Arts Center is hosting its first show of the year through with all new artwork. The Advocates Show is open to the public and runs through May 12th and um, displays a wide variety of works of art. And maplegroveartscenter.org is the website if you want to get some more information. All right, as always, a lot going on in the city. Heidi, thank you so much for the information. You're bringing us up to date. Let's leave you with that next council date. And again, look at that closely. It is a Tuesday, February 22nd, 7.30 at the Government Center, right in the middle of the screen the website again a lot of information about events we've talked about and some of the developments going on maplegrovemn.gov for Heidi Nelson I'm Bea Kaiser thanks for joining us on the Maple Grove City Report